Hi, I'm Kieran Petrie from the Dynamics 365 Fast Track team. Welcome to this tech talk on Power Platform GitHub Actions. The agenda for today's tech talk is as follows. A look at basic ALM with the Power Platform. A general overview of GitHub Actions. A closer look at repositories, branches, pull requests, releases and workflows in GitHub, which are all used in the end-to-end -end deployment. Overview of the configuration of an environment and workflows, and a demo of the execution of an end-to-end -end deployment. And finally, references to useful docs and videos on GitHub Actions. Power Platform ELM. Power Platform ELM Basics. There are three important components to understand when considering Power Platform ELM. Environments. An environment is a space to store manage and share your organization's business data, apps and flows. It also serves as a container to separate apps that may have different roles, security requirements or target audience. Like any traditional application development experience, a number of environments will typically exist to make changes to development and for the end users to use the live version of the app production. The number of environments will normally depend on the type of application being built. For example, an enterprise application would typically have many more environments than shown here, depending on the size of the build team and the various testing stages required, whereas an app being built by a citizen developer for their own use may only ever exist in a single environment. Solutions. These are the mechanisms for implementing ALM in the Power Platform, and there are two types of solutions to be aware of. Unmanaged solutions are used in development environments only while you make changes to your application. Unmanaged solutions can be exported either as unmanaged or managed. Exported unmanaged versions of your solutions should be checked into your source control system and should be considered your source for Microsoft Power Platform assets. When an unmanaged solution is deleted, only the solution container of any customizations included in it is deleted. All the unmanaged customizations remain in effect in the environment and belong to the default solution. With managed solutions, these are used to deploy to any environment that isn't a development environment for that solution. As an ALM best practice, managed solutions should be generated by exporting an unmanaged solution as managed and considered a build artifact. Managed solutions have the following properties. You can't edit components directly within a managed solution. You can't export a managed solution. When a managed solution is deleted or uninstalled, all the customizations and extensions included with it are removed from the environment. If that included tables of col or columns in tables, that would remove the data as well. Source control. This allows developers to collaborate on and track changes to code, or in the case of the Power Platform changes in the solution. Azure DevOps supports two types of source control. Git. This is a distributed source control where each developer has a copy of the source repository on their dev machine, including all branch and history information. Each developer then makes changes and shares the changes in a separate step when ready. Team Foundation Version Control. The developers have only one version of each file on their dev machines. Historical data is maintained only on the server. Branches are path-based and are created on the server only. With a healthy ALM, we would combine the environments, solutions and source control to control the movement of changes made by developers to being available to users. This is typically automated to ensure repeatability and avoid user mistakes. The flow is as follows. The developer would make changes in the dev environment in an unmanaged solution. The solution would then be exported as an unmanaged solution. This would then be unpacked using the build tools from the single zip file into multiple files representing the various components in the solution. This would be pushed into source control and stored in the repository. A branching strategy would normally be used here to manage potential conflicts. When it is ready to be deployed to downstream environments, typically bundled into a release, then the files are repacked using the build tools and imported into a build environment to ensure consistency with each release and then exported from the build environment as a managed solution. 
This managed solution is then imported into the target environments, testing or production, which will apply the customizations directly to that environment. Now let's have a look at how we can automate this process using GitHub Actions. Overview of GitHub Actions. Why GitHub Actions? GitHub Actions is a continuous integration and continuous delivery CI CD platform that allows you to automate your build, test and deployment pipeline. You can create workflows that build and test every pull request to your repository or deploy merged pull requests to production. The GitHub Actions provide the following benefits. They natively integrate with the GitHub providing code, collaboration, packages and CI CD all in one place for your developers. You're able to automate any workflow by triggering workflows of nearly any event in the GitHub ecosystem to increase automation, which can be scaled easily in the cloud. There is end-to-end -end traceability, provides an unbroken chain of custody for your apps, and scale best practice with the Power Platform by defining and scaling processes, security, and compliance policies for your organization across teams, repos, and throughout the software development lifecycle. Components of GitHub Actions You can configure a GitHub Actions workflow to be triggered when an event occurs in your repository, such as a pull request being opened or an issue being created. Your workflow contains one or more jobs which can run in sequential order or in parallel. Workflows are defined by a YAML file checked into your repository. Each job will run inside its own virtual machine runner or inside a container and has one or more steps that either run a script that you define or run an action. In a job, steps are executed in order and are dependent on each other. Each runner can run a single job at a time and each step is executed on the same runner. You can share data from one step to another, but each workflow run executes in a fresh, newly provisioned virtual machine. Use an action to help reduce the amount of repetitive code that you write in your workflow files. An action can pull your Git repository from GitHub, set up the correct toolchain for your build environment, or set up authentication to your cloud provider. You can write your own actions, or you can find actions to use in your workflows in the GitHub marketplace. The flexibility of all these elements combined ensures that you can add automation throughout your ARM process. Repository, Branches, Pull Requests, Releases and Workflows GitHub Repositories A GitHub repository is a location on the GitHub platform that will store all of your project's files and each file's revision history. Repositories can be user-owned, where you would give people collaborator access so they can collaborate on your project, or organisation-owned, where organisation members can be given access permission to collaborate on the repository. Repositories can be used to manage your work and collaborate with others. Issues can collect user feedback, report bugs and organise tasks to be accomplished. Discussions allow people to ask and answer questions, share information, make announcements and have conversations about a project. Pull requests are used to propose changes to a repository and project boards organise and prioritise your issues and pull requests. Branches Branches are used to isolate development work without affecting other branches within the repository. Each repository has one default branch, name, and can have multiple other branches. You merge the changes made in one branch into another using a pull request. A branch, the head, is always created from an existing branch, the base, and typically eventually merged back into the main branch once the features have been completed. The branching strategy used should be considered carefully to ensure that all projects working on a repository can safely work on and merge the changes as required. The simple example below illustrates branching to work on two features in a repository and merging them back into the main branch once complete. The branches are created from main when the developer or developers wish to build new features. Once they are happy with their changes, they will create pull requests. When a pull request is approved, the changes are merged into the main branch and the branch can then be deleted. Any further branches are retargeted and the second pull request may have to deal with merged conflicts. Pull requests. Pull requests are proposed changes to a repository submitted by a user 
and accepted or rejected by the repository's collaborators. Each pull request has their own discussion forum and must be accepted before the changes can be merged into the base branch. Contributors can discuss the pull request and decide if the changes should be merged with the base branch. By default, any pull request can be merged at any time, unless the head branch conflicts with the base branch. The default merge pull request will take all commits from the feature branch, the head, and add them to the base branch in a merge commit. A squash and merge takes all the pull request commits and squashes them into a single commit, so instead of seeing all the individual commits from a head branch, the commits are combined into one and merged into the base branch. Releases. Releases are deployable software iterations that can be packaged and made available to be used by others. Releases are based on tags, which mark a specific point in your repository's history. A tag date may be different than a release date since they can be created at different times. This means once a repository has been tagged, a release can contain the version of the files at the point in time the tag was created. This allows versions of the software package to be recreated at any time using the correct tag, which will ensure the correct files and versions of the files are included. Workflows Workflows are defined by YAML file checked into your repository, are stored in the GitHub slash workflows folder, and can have multiple workflow files, each of which can perform a different set of tasks. For example, you can have one workflow to export your customizations from development as an unmanaged solution and add them to a new branch, and another to convert this solution to manage and deploy to downstream environments. You can use the GitHub Actions for Microsoft Power Platform along with any other available GitHub Actions to compose your build and release workflows. GitHub Actions for Microsoft Power Platform include the following capabilities importing and exporting application metadata, also known as solutions, that contains various platform components such as Canvas apps, model-driven apps, desktop flows, power virtual agent chatbots, AI builder models, custom engagement apps, and connectors between development environments and source control. Deploying to downstream environments, provisioning or deprovisioning environments, or performing static analysis checks against solutions using Power Apps Solution Checker. We will now go through the setup of an environment and execution of an end-to-end -end deployment using GitHub Actions for the Microsoft Power Platform. Setup. First, configure the Power Platform environment with an application user that will execute your ALM. You will then need a GitHub repository. You will then store the user secrets so GitHub Actions can access your Power Platform environment. And then we create the workflows in GitHub using the GitHub Actions for Microsoft Power Platform. Create application registration. The GitHub Actions will execute the commands against your environments using an application user. First, create the application user in Azure Active Directory and give it permissions to Dataverse. Then, create a secret for the application user. You will need to take note of this secret so you can use it later. Add application user to environments. In the Power Platform Admin Center for each environment, manage the application users and add the new application user that you've just created. You'll then need to provide security roles to be able to export and import solutions. This is the Environment Maker, Solution Checker, and System Customizer role. Create and configure a GitHub repository. If you don't already have a GitHub repository, Go to github.com forward slash join and create a repository. Once the repository is created, go to the settings, secrets, and add the secret value that you copied earlier for the application user to your GitHub secrets. Create workflows in GitHub. Create the workflow to export and unpack the unmanaged solution file to a new branch by copying this file into a new workflow file in your repository. The detailed instructions you can find in this tutorial. Important things to note and update are the environment URL, the client ID from your app registration, the tenant ID from your Azure Active Directory, as well as ensure you update the default name for the solution and ensure that the secret name 
in the file matches the one that you created in your GitHub secret. Also look for the export solution action and add the async attribute to ensure that the process runs asynchronously from your Power Platform environment. Create workflows in GitHub continued. Next, we will create the reusable workflow to release the solution file to a new environment by copying this file to a new workflow file in your repository. We need to call this reusable workflow file on a release event. So by copying this workflow file into your repository, you can then update the values just as before to ensure that when a release is made within your repository, this will trigger an event which will trigger your workflow and deploy your solution to the new environment. Execution. Once you have updated your customizations in the development environment, you will then run the export and branch solution workflow from GitHub, merge the changes using a pull request, create a new release, which will then trigger the deployment to the target environment. Execution of the end-to-end -end release. Once I've finished making changes to the customizations, I will then increment the solution version of the unmanaged solution in the development environment. Once that saves, I will then switch to GitHub to start the export and branch. Once in GitHub, I navigate to Actions and manually execute the export and branch solution workflow. At this point, I will be able to change the variables in the workflow if necessary. The execution will start a runner for the workflow. And once it starts to execute, I can follow the progress of the job in the console. This will normally take several minutes to execute as the workflow will first need to authenticate in the environment as the application user configured during setup and then submit a request to the environment to export the solution as unmanaged. Once the solution has been obtained, the workflow will then create a new branch in the repository and unpack the solution file, which separates the components in the solution XML into separate files to make it easier to manage conflicts. You can now create a pull request to have the changes in the solution merged from the new branch back into the main branch. The changes in the files can be viewed and once you add a description of the change, the pull request can be submitted. The contributors can then view the pull request and approve squish and merge the changes back into the main branch, lastly deleting the branches is no longer necessary. To release the changes to the environment, go to releases and create a new release. In this instance, a tag and release will be created at the same time. By creating a release, we will trigger an event in the repository, which will trigger the release to prod workflow automatically. As before, we can navigate to actions to see the workflow running and view its progress via the console. This particular workflow has two steps. The first step, will pack the files in the repository back into a single solution file and import it into the build environment as unmanaged. It will then export the solution as a managed solution and it will become a build artifact. The second step will take the new solution artifact and port it into the target environment. Once this has been completed, we will be able to navigate to the Power Platform admin console and see that the new version of the solution has been deployed to the target environment. Note, the managed solutions do not need to be published in the target environment. Resources. Useful resources. The links below provide further information and learning on ALM in the Microsoft Power Platform as well as GitHub Actions for Microsoft Power Platform.